Hey there, welcome back to Gen Z Codes. In this video, we're going to be discussing variables and data types. Now, I've already covered this concept in the Scratch and Python courses, so those who've seen that can feel free to fast forward to where I talk about the syntaxing and how to initialize a variable on Java. Now, remember to watch that part though because it is not the same as Python or Scratch. And for those who haven't seen the Python or Scratch videos, I will explain the concepts now. So let's start with the data types. All computer programs work with some type of information. Now numbers, text, dates, and pictures are all examples of some of the most common types of information. When you speak, a person can understand the type of data, but the computer cannot. This is why there are fixed data types and why you must explicitly tell Java what data type the information is. A data type is a category for values and every value belongs to exactly one data type. The most common data types in Java are integers, doubles, strings, and boolean values. The values negative 5 and 56 are examples of integers. The uh, integer or int data type, as you can see over here, um, is for the values that are whole numbers, but these can be either positive or negative. Now, um, an integer is basically the definition of it for computer science and in any programming language is the same as in mathematics. Now, the next one that we have are doubles. Now, numbers with a decimal point, like 4.29 or 7.0, are called doubles. The next type that we have is st a string. Now, Java programs have text values, and these are called strings. Now, it's always important to surround the string with double quotes or speech marks so that Java knows where the string ends and where it begins. So, we have an example over here where we've put Lisa as the string and we've put it in speech marks. And in the first program that we created last time, we also had a string over here which was Hello World. Now, not putting the, uh, not putting the speech marks around it will probably result in a syntaxing error and your program will not function as you wish for it to and it will not actually run. It will stop once it reaches that line. So always remember to do the syntaxing correctly. Anyway, so it's also important to note that you can definitely store numbers in a string. But if you want to add, subtract, or do any mathematical operation with two numbers, you will not be able to do so if you store them as strings. As soon as you put those speech marks, that number will be stored as a text value. Besides this, you can even have a blank st string though. Um, and the last type of data that, we actually, that I actually wanted to discuss is a boolean. Now, a boolean is also another type of data, but while integers, strings, and doubles can have an unlimited number of possible values, booleans can only have two. And this is either true or false. Uh, when you're declaring the variable though, like uh, I'll discuss this later, but when you're dis declaring a variable, the true and false values don't use the speech marks. Now this is actually what distinguishes them from strings. Now, like any other value, Boolean values can also be stored in expressions and also, uh, sorry, Boolean values can also be used in expressions and they can be stored in variables. Now, let's move on to what variables are. So we've discussed different types of data, but when it comes to the actual information, computer programs need places to store it, regardless of whichever data type it is. For example, let's say we want the program to know someone's age or name. We would need to a place to store the name or age. So, to store such information, we use something called variables. These are called variables because the information stored there can change or vary while the program runs. They're the primary method for moving information around in a Java object, uh, in a Java project, sorry. So, let's now learn how to declare and assign a value to a variable. So the first thing you need to do is actually declare the variable and what type of data it's going to store. For example, if it's someone's age, I would say int age because obviously you cannot be a decimal number of years and it's, it's a numeric value, so I would choose integer. Now, and I would put semicolon, uh, semicolon after it um, as the syntaxing. So, now let's say I wanted to store someone's name. I would say string name. Right? And remember the S over here has to be capitalized. 
Then the next thing is, let's say I wanted to know how much money this person has in their wallet. Completely random example, but let's say I wanted to know how much they had. I would say double money. Why double over here? Because money can be, like when you're counting dollars, it can you can have a decimal number, right? You can say like 5.5 .5 or 6.2 dollars, that's how much I have, right? Now, um, then if I wanted to have a variable to store whether or not this person who has the money, who um, who's of cert of x amount of age, ha um, is a girl. Then I would say boolean is girl. Now, why am I saying this? Because it's either true or false. It's a, it's a yes or no question, right? And so this is basically how we declare variables. First, you put the data type, and then you put the name of the variable. And I will discuss how to name a variable a bit later in the video. Alright, so now let's look at how to assign a value. Now this assignment statement is probably one of the simplest and most widely used statements in Java. All you have to do is write the variable name, as we've done over here, put an equal to sign, and then on the left side of the uh, sign, on the left hand side of the equal to sign, you have to put the value that you're assigning to it. So let's say I have age declared over here, now the person's age is 16. So I put age equal to sign and then 16 with a semicolon. Then for name, I would put name equal to Lisa in um, in speech marks because it's a string, and I would put a semicolon again. Money equals to 3.25, and again I would put a semicolon. Is girl? Yes, it is true, so I would put the semicolon again. And that's how you kind of assign a variable. So um, now what I actually want to do is actually talk about actual values and literals. So the actual values assigned to these variables are called literals, since they literally show you their values. Now let's actually talk about um, naming variables, right? So there are some rules when it comes to naming variables. Firstly, it can only be one word, which means that you can't have you cannot have a space between different words. So we, you would need to club the words together. You can capitalize the first letter of each word in that whole cluster to make out each word, but try to keep it as simple as possible. So over here, it's is girl, right? And I've just kept the G capitalized so I know that it's on that it, they're two separate words. But I cannot call it is girl. That is not allowed. I can just do is and then girl as one complete word, right? Now, this brings me to the next rule, which is Java is case sensitive. So you need to keep that in mind while declaring and calling a variable. Another rule is that you can only use letters, numbers, and the underscore character. Lastly, the variable name cannot begin with a number, and you cannot use a word that is reserved by Java. Like print line, like we had learned over here, Print line, that is a word that's reserved by Java. Or something like system with a capital S as well. That is a word that's reserved by Java. So we cannot use that in this uh, to name our variable. But now the last thing I want to talk to you about is an alternative format. You could definitely declare a variable in the manner that I just showed you, which is this part, right? But there are many instances where you might want to assign a value as soon as you declare it. It's a pretty good programming practice to do such an initialization if you do happen to know the value of a certain variable. And there will be many instances where Java will insist you to initialize your variables. So how do you do this? Instead of having two separate lines for declaring the variable and assigning it to a value, we combine it to make a single one. So over here, if I actually put it as a comment, let's get rid of that. Right. Uh, and we can get rid of that for now. All right, yes. So, if someone's age is 16, I would say a int age equals to 16. And it would just be one line now. Easy, right? All right, well, that's all I wanted to discuss in this video. In the next video, we'll discuss arithmetic operators and string concat uh, concatenation. Thanks for watching. Happy coding!